Welcome back to another vlog. Today is a very exciting vlog. I knew this day was gonna come, and finally it's here. It has been approximately 430 days since I've last filmed with the co-host that's gonna be on today's show. Um, I don't really know how much of an introduction he knows. If, if you're following this channel, you, you might have an idea of who it is, but uh, this week, we're at Turtle Mountain Resort, Fishing for big bluegills with, they, they call him Mr. Bluegill. They also call him Mr. Ice Fishing. They also call him Mr. Uncut Angling. Wow, that's quite, quite the intro. I just killed these dishes, dude. <laughs> okay. Aaron just did the dishes. You know this guy, Uncut Angling. My mentor, my friend, my amigo, my wingman for many years. I better look good, I wasn't ready for this shoot. Yeah, you, you were. You're looking good. Okay. We're going for big bluegills. Did you catch that already? Where are we? Turtle Mountain Provincial Park? Turtle Mountain Lodge? We don't know what this place is even called, do we? Resort. Turtle Mountain Resort. It's they uh, they put us up last night, and uh, today we're gonna try to find some bluegills. Aaron has been here a little more recently than me, so he's probably gonna take the tiller handle in his grasp, but we're gonna put the smack down on some big, big, big gills once we're done the dishes. We'll see you guys in a bit. It's caught in the crossfire. I trained my luck to know why he's caught in the crossfire. Well, to start off our day, we are doing a little scouting, a little looking. And right now it is the end of June, and the bluegill should be on beds, if not done. We're not sure. But basically a bluegill will come up shallow, fan out a basketball sized area with its tail, and that is where the eggs will be laid and hatched, and fry will be protected for the first little bit. But Aaron's on the motor, I'm up front with polarized shades, and we're just searching. It's a little cloudy day, so it's not ideal, but you're gonna look for these circular discs, and typically, they'll be clumped together. Bass, you'll see a couple beds here, a couple beds there. Bluegills, when they find an area they like, there will be maybe 30 beds in an area, but we're gonna keep cruising. I'm gonna stay on the front and we're gonna see if we can find some shallow, shallow gills. And your hair's starting to look good. Like it, it passed that growth stage and now it's at the good looking yeah. stage. Come on. We've located some beds. Aaron's gonna take the first cast in and see if he can break the skunk for the day. Now those are sneaky ones behind a dock. If you guys want to match up this uh, cabin, I'll give you one little starter spot. It's tough to hide the cabins, eh? <laughs> we got the first bluegill of the day. Believe it or not, it only takes seven inches for a master angler in Manitoba. And that is the match of a master angler, first fish. So things are good. Things are slow. Do you want to plug any of your sponsors right now? Um, you got time, I'll give you another 15 seconds. Did you say anything about Travel Manitoba yet? We like Travel Manitoba. Did you say we're in Manitoba? We're in Manitoba. Yeah, good. In that south, southwest. We're barely in Manitoba because this lake's on the border, but I think that the best water's in Canada because you've got these giant lakes attached to Metagosh that the fish come up here to spawn in. So just keep that in mind. If you live in North Dakota and you're struggling on Metagosh, all the big ones are up here. I love fish. There's a sign for your fishing report. All right, so a little update. We've found some beds that I'll show you here. They'll be a little tough to see, but those, those light circles, those are empty, empty bluegill beds, which, what do you think that means? Do you think that means they're done or are they pulled off for the day? Well, the thing about it is, Jay, is that different beds can be at different stages, so. We need to see a bunch of empty beds and then we'll know beds is very bleak. At this point, we're still hopeful. Yeah, we're still compiling data. Oh yeah, there is there is fish. 
What's your guess now? I'd say there's a couple. They're here. There's still some there. Even after us spooking them, there's still a couple sitting there. You can see those beds pretty good now. Okay, so do you think we should come back with bobbers and worms in a little bit? We are headed back onto the beds that we spooked the fish off of. We're gonna stay a little further back. Aaron's gonna drop the talon. And are we going to bait? Can we say that? I've got worms. Aaron's got worms. How are you rigging it? What are you doing? I've got worms. I'm gonna use well, the same presentation, slip bobber, but I don't know if I'll put on a different jig, maybe. Maybe I'll just put on a naked jig, a little piece of worm. <laughs> Thank you, Mitch. Oh wow, those look nice. You need such a small piece, we're gonna cut it with scissors because you really need such a small piece. There's no point to having a bigger piece than that. If you put a bigger piece on, you're just gonna be going through worms unnecessarily. First cast with the night crawler. We're on to another, probably master angler bluegill. Oof. Just chowed it. Little tube with a night crawler. We're gonna throw this one on the bump board. This might be, might be master angler number two. Eh, almost eight and a half inches. Wow. Another trophy. Going back. So as we said before, we blew up on this spot to find where the beds were. And think about bed fishing is often the fish will come back to those beds after you spook them off. So. Just because you spooked the fish doesn't mean the spots are right off. We found this cluster of beds, now came back, let it rest for 10 minutes, and the fish are on. How we're set up right now is we've got a talon in the back, and if, if you guys watch Aaron's video, you know what a talon is, but basically it's a vertical anchor. This one goes down to, is this 12 footer? Yeah. 12 footer, and they have 15 foot models now. Basically it's a fiberglass pole that sticks into the mud, into the gravel, and just anchors you on the spot. So for any shallow water, panfish, bass, muskie, spring walleye it's kind of the deal so you can see right now we are anchored two four six so it's six feet down so it might still be a couple feet in the mud but that's what's keeping us locked down here and that's where we're scoring rolling because that looks big definitely big, big. that that could be a what if we a barn door oh it's a oh, 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 oh. not happy that you're filming this jay i'm glad i pulled the camera out for this uh, can you lip him didn't want this to be a public moment man yeah yeah I yeah do like all species but this is not the target at the moment since we're releasing all the bluegills do you want to eat this one i heard they're really good baked nope nope have you eaten bullet before mm. i've put them in my mouth i don't know if i've eaten them you got one here? Yes. This might be the biggest of the morning, actually. Really? That's a, that's a big gill. Look at that tube. Just gone. Can you see that? Like, they do not have big mouths, but he managed to inhale. He hit my bobber first. Big old gill. I'm saying nine incher. We're not gonna measure this one. They're kind of, seems like all of them are trophies, but this one is going right back in the water. Yeah. Missed another hook set, but she was busy freaking out about the jet skiers. A lot of, a lot of busy jet skis. Oh, it's Ooh, giant! That's Might big. Be a giant. That's big. <laughs> Jeez! Oh my goodness! That's big. That, eh? Is that a? Is that your biggest? That could be my biggest oh. ever. <laughs> that. It's <laughs> a toad, dude. I do not know if I've ever caught a bluegill that, that so big. big. Jeez! My goodness! Wow. Amazing. Wow. Amazing. 10 3 8 we'll, we'll say. So that is 10 and 3 8 and just shows you girth is everything because this fish has a giant forehead, giant belly, wow. probably full of eggs that we are gonna make sure see the next generation right now. Awesome. Well, we're probably gonna call it a day pretty soon, but we are ending it with a feeding frenzy on this last set of beds we found. That's a pretty big one. Manitoba may only have 
one bluegill fishery right now, but it is absolutely incredible, the size of these fish. People in the States drive all over for bluegills of this size. This is another probably 10 incher. Um, we're gonna call it a day, but it just shows you how much potential there is in this little bit of water that comes into Manitoba. And it's definitely worth checking out. Well, that is a wrap on Lake Metagoshi, Lake Metagosh, whatever you want to call it. Awesome day. We only fished for <laughs> four or five hours, maybe? Hours, Jay. But we're not calling it a day. I think we're going to try to catch some smallies yet. There's another little little gem in this part of the world. And uh, have you fished there before? Deloraine. Have I fished there before? I think I fished there once in like October or November trying to catch them super deep. So this is the opposite end of the season when they're going to be super shallow, which is probably going to be our preference and in our favor. So another option for this part of the world, Deloraine Reservoir we're headed to next. And uh, there's been, been some big smallies, what, 20 inches? Yep. 20 inches coming out of there. People catching the open water through the ice. So we'll, uh, we'll hurry off to the next lake and see if we can sneak a couple in before the sun sets. I thought we'd take a moment to have a little Q and A with Mr. Aaron and just to get caught up on his life and to figure out, well, I, I guess first question. I was gonna ask the questions. No, I, oh, okay. I, I'll, I'll hit you with one first. What was the follow-up with Jay Siemens and Jay Siemens Media Productions? That, like, people wanna know. The what really happened? was about 400 days and it was glorious and I guess it's over now. Like, what was the cause of it or the duration? Was Sam part of it? Were we fighting over Sam? Or was that? Sam is Jay's fiance. I look away for 400 days and Jay meets Sam and marries Sam and now it's Jay and I again except he's not single anymore so things are definitely now, different. all the girls go to this guy. Any predictions for this reservoir? Ah man. I was asking Jay how many he can catch himself because we got three hours and Jay was thinking maybe 10 per person. All giants, like this is a big fish reservoir. I don't know why it has such big fish, but I think if we catch bass, half of them are gonna be mass wrangler size, which is like three, three and a half pounds, 18 inches. Look out. Giant first, like third cast, maybe. Oh man, this is big. Where's the net? net it yourself? You got the net. I thought it was a pike when it hit it. Oh my goodness. Drone's making noise too, Jay. Drone's making noise. Right off the rock wall here. Holy smokes. This is huge. Huge bass. Oh, I'm nervous. Jay is tense. Oh, come on. All that drone beeping is making a tent. Oh! Look at that bass! I haven't caught a small this big in a while. Look at that fish. Perfect, clean. I'm guessing they just spawned. That is a big smallie. This is like one of my biggest Manitoba smallies. In this little reservoir, kicking out big ones. We're gonna throw it on the tape. 19, 19 and a quarter, mouth closed. That is a hog. Okay, one more luck, because we gotta get some some big girls going. We're throwing this one back, and I think we're gonna have a good day. It's caught in the crossfire. It's caught in the crossfire. I trained my luck to know why he's caught in the crossfire, and now I'm here waking. Nice. Hold yeah, them up, buddy. hold them right up. Look at that thing, it's smallmouth bass. Not quite as big as Jay's, maybe an inch smaller, but still great smallmouth, nice to get on the board. Okay, we're rolling, no hook set again. This fish is bigger than the last one. Like, I saw it come out and eat me. We're in the 
same spot. Holy smokes, I'm nervous. Your weed's thick, eh? Yeah. Weeds on the line never I great. I'm so. not feeling good about this. I think he's still hooked. Yeah. Holy smokes, did that fish look big? Oh, there's pike in here. Oh, that's disappointing. Oh. Wow, you should I have seen I... how excited this oh, guy was. My emotions have been heavy on this lake. I thought I had a 22 inch smallie right there. Holy smokes. We'll, we'll hold this pike up. A lot of highs and lows for Jay this week. He got engaged, he caught a little pike. That would be both ends of the spectrum. And I fished with Aaron Weeb. And that would be in the middle somewhere. There we go. That. I gotta see him. Is some nice bycatch today. I thought it was a 22 inch smallie. Turns out it's a 24 inch pike. Get that sick release angle. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, back in the game. That pike was, uh, oh, Aaron's up Smallie. Small mo bass. In the boat. I don't need a picture of that one, Jay. You can just chuck them back. No picture needed. What are you throwing? I'm throwing a Jackal Rhythm Wave 3.8 inch. Basically just a paddle tail. Nice little swim bait. A lot of different brands that make these. They're an amazing search bait or a bait for catching fish where you know exactly where they are. Nice sized pikes. Yeah, it doesn't have to be just for scanning water, I'm saying though. And I am now at three small bass. I don't know if they'll all be shown on film. Nothing close to Jay's 19 incher, but I am covering a lot of water here. We have to cut half this fight out. There we go. That is, uh, I would say the second biggest bass of the day. For the team uncut. And there we go. I will show you guys what we're doing as soon as I put this guy back. Gone. All right, so where we started was right there. We fished all around this lake. It is not that big and we came back. And this right here, it's called Rip Wrap. It's just mad made rubble along the edge of the dam. And uh, we're picking it apart now. That's why I switched the drop shot so we can just hop it back very slowly, fish this water slow. They, uh, they like rocks in the spring. They like where the wind's blowing and that's where we're spending our time. Look at that sky. Big fan of the orange and blue in cinema. It's uh, complimentary colors. As you've seen a lot of Hollywood movies, that's why there's a lot of blue and orange going on. What are you thinking? One more and then we call it a day? I'm fishing with the wrong hand. Oh man. They had me a rod that was snagged. Oh, I got him, I got him, I got him. Oh! oh. <laughs> okay, we're done. That's a wrap. We're giving up. Jay's like, oh no, no, McDonald's. McDonald's, McDonald's, McDonald's. You wanna to go to McDonald's? Guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks to Aaron for finally caving and hopping in the boat with me again. Hopefully it's not another 400 days. I think this is a silly thing to say, but if you are not subscribed to Uncut Angling, please go subscribe. Aaron makes the best fishing videos in the game. I might be kind of biased, but I stand behind that. And come to Southwestern Manitoba and you can experience, experience some bluegills, some bass, some nice sized pikes. Oh, until we meet again, thank you guys. See you later. Aaron. Yep. I, I got you a little, a little something something. What you get? McDonald's! Is that what you're asking for? That is my favorite. Let's go. Let's go.